How strong is Yostrid Dream Song? Part of the uh, Easter fusion that just happened. Now, I didn't actually go for her on my account, but my wife did because she thought there were two really good reasons to go for her. Uh, this really cool staff and obviously her basket of Easter eggs here. So, uh, because I don't have her on my account, I haven't had too much time to mess with her or play with her or like play test her and get a good grasp of what she can do. I've read her kit before, but I haven't really uh, like delved in and gained experience with her, but we're going to do that today. Thank you for 1,297 subs. Her A1 has a chance to place sleep, and then it also has um, a higher chance if you have a decreased speed or weaken that is placed by her on the enemy. Her A2 is going to be an AoE with a chance to, well, it's 100% when booked on a three turn cooldown to place said decrease speed and weaken, also decreasing the turn meter of all enemies by 15%. In most fights, what you're going to want to do is start out with her A3, which places an increased speed and an increased attack on all allies for three turns and filling the turn meter at the same time while giving an extra turn. So it's going to snowball, right? You start off with your A3 going into your A2. Her A1, to me personally, feels a little bit niche. I'm pretty sure there's some play that you can come up with, I guess, but I'm not really sure. Maybe Sand Devil, I don't know. But this is pretty nice. It's on a four turn cooldown, realistically more like a three turn cooldown because it grants an extra turn rolling into this. Her passive, whenever this champion or an ally has their turn meter increased, heals all allies based on their max HP. Percentage of the value of the heal is equal to half of the turn meter increase. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a pretty interesting mechanic. Your entire team is going to have um, more survivability. Increases ally speed in arena battles by 28%. I can see this champion being used in arena, so that is definitely something we're going to be trying out as well. Because of her abilities, she can help set up your team. Boosting turn meter, placing buffs, decreasing turn meter, placing debuffs. Uh, the thing that's missing here is probably going to be decreased defense. Both of them are going to increase damage received, but I always feel like decreased defense does a lot more. Now, she's not built on my wife's account, and she doesn't have masteries yet. I'm going to do that right now with you guys, since it's going to be my first take on her because my wife isn't that far into the end game i thought it was pretty nice to be able to use her account because it doesn't have end game gear it's got more of a, a mid game feel to it like she she doesn't have a super stacked account and you can see that by way of looking at her gear for an example so uh, you know this isn't going to be a video where i show you my my insane stats and i'm like oh yeah just drop 300 speed on plus on her with you know, x you know four 500 accuracy and resistance and this is going to be a little bit more realistic i think and there's going to be value in that and keep in mind because there aren't you know a plethora of pay to win books or end game availability for books because we're not doing nightmare and ultra nightmare yet she's not going to be booked so keep that in mind this lack of books here is going to play a role in this showcase this champion guide so just keep that in mind we're going to start off by building her out and with her kit the way that she is and by the way her base speed is actually at 115 it's pretty fast that's like one of the faster ones in the game for reference let's take a look at arbiter has a base speed of 110 lissandra is really fast she's going at 110 as well 115 as well so definitely one of the faster ones in the entire roster of raid shadow legends what we're going to be doing is making sure we build her out fast and we're going to make sure she takes as many turns as possible so i'm going to try and build her out in relentless gear i feel like relentless gear if you can if you can swing relentless gear that would be ideal uh, before we get into the actual building process i want to go ahead and do her masteries first because this plays a role into what the optimizer uh, reads for stats naturally i feel more so inclined with a support champion to want to go down the defense tree i feel like that's more of a this is more of an, like an end game tree to take i am going to take offense for her account because we want to get as much damage as possible we're going to be taking war master because this is going to help us in the dungeons the demon lord and hydra as well so we're going to do that and we're going to take support tree. She does need accuracy because she is placing debuffs. We're going to take extra accuracy here and here. We're going to get a, a lore of steel 
boost. Now, I don't know if there's going to be any specific like cheese comps that are going to come out. I feel like she could benefit from taking Cycle of Magic, so we're going to go ahead and take that. And this right here. So we can either we can take either or. We can take Rapid Response or Arcane Celerity. Again, we want her to take as many turns as possible. So we can either do that when a buff is removed or expired or when a debuff is removed or expired. Innately, she might be cycling through moves fast or the entire team is going to be moving pretty quickly. So uh, Rapid Response feels about right, but I don't think you can go wrong either way because she is going to be placing those debuffs. Lasting Gifts is going to be a nice choice to take. A Master Hexer would be nice to extend the debuffs on like the Hydra heads. Sniper is okay to take, but all of her moves are already at 100% when fully booked. I'm going to go ahead and probably take Lasting Gifts. Let's pause right here and come back to this. We're gonna take uh, Crit Rate, Crit Damage, take Live Drinker, the standard clan boss masteries right here. Her A1 is going to be a single hitter, so we're going to be taking War Master. If it was a triple hitter or above, we'd be taking Giant Slayer. If she was a nuker, you could take Helm Smasher or Flawless Execution, but we're going to be taking War Master. We're taking Methodical so that she can have increased damage anytime she uses her A1. Sorry, I didn't go over why I'm choosing these things. Increased crit rate and crit damage just for extra damage, but nothing significant here. It's really just to get over on this side. Life Drinker so that she does a little bit of healing whenever her health drops below 50% or 50% or below. Uh, extra damage, uh, we just went over methodical. And then uh, War Master. And over here, we can go ahead and take Master Hexer. That feels about right because she's not really going to be killing too many people. So we're not taking kill streak. Well, let's see. Because each round killed, you're not going to be killing all the time. She's going to be staying in lab with healing pretty well anyway. She doesn't really place any shields. I like to take Grim Resolve because it increases the damage when attacking with 50% or less HP, and I feel like that pairs well with Life Drinker, so we're going to go ahead and take that. Again, don't blindly copy Masteries, but uh, go ahead and feel free to blindly copy these Masteries. So with that being said, we're going to go over here to um, the Optimizer, click Live Refresh, and here you can see that speed is something that we're looking for. Now, in Hydra, which is sort of the main thing that I'm looking forward to taking her into. We want to make sure that she's got a decent amount of accuracy and a decent amount of resistance. All right, so we can look this up real quick. For Hydra Normal, you want to have an accuracy of 145, about 150. And for Resistance, you want to have about 300, and that's for Normal. Now, if you're going up to Nightmare, if you're trying to use her more so in the end game, you want to have 340 accuracy and 405 resistance. Now we're just gonna go ahead and only use her in normal because that's where my wife's account is at the moment. So we're looking for a minimum of 150 accuracy and a minimum of 300. So 150 and 300. Let's go back over here and we're gonna go ahead to optimize, type in uh, 300 resistance minimum and 150 accuracy minimum as well. And her speed is gonna be the highest priority. Secondary will be HP and defense. We wanna make sure that she's living. As far as sets, like I said, we're going to be taking Relentless, see what we can get in Relentless. If you don't have Relentless, speed sets would be pretty dope, or whatever makes you go fast. Uh, perception could be nice as well. Again, stats over sets for the most part. Let's see what's available for us. 40k, 3200, 234 speed is a little slow, and we got the res and accuracy that we need. I just remembered I'm not even on my account, so that, that's actually pretty decent for mid game. So 234 speed, she could take 246, drop about 4,000 accuracy. Where are we taking gear off of though? Oh, we're taking gear off our model. We don't want to do that. We don't want to take gear off of these guys. Let's rerun it. All right, so we're going to try 240 speed. Uh, we're going to take off the defense and HP and just see if we can get those, get those going here. We're about 230. Okay, so we can get 234. So we have 30, uh, 35k, 2000 defense, a little squishy, but we do get the speed that we're looking for and as well as the resistance and accuracy. We're taking off a feint and emic. Okay, so now that we have her built, here are all of the pieces of gear that I was able to scrape together. I had to sell some gear to get the silver to roll all of these pieces up. Again, we were looking for relentless 
And it just so happened that we got Righteous as well. That's what the optimizer put out. We're focusing specifically on um, speed, accuracy, resistance, and then survivability stats. And this was what was available to us. 42,000 HP, 2,600 defense, 244 speed, 351 resistance, and then 186 accuracy, at least for normal Hydra, we're going to be landing those debuffs. If we're talking about Demon Lord Clan Boss, these are the stats needed for Nightmare. You're looking at 255 resistance with 175 accuracy. If you wanted to bump up to um, Ultra Nightmare, we're going to need 250 accuracy with 330 resistance. When the gear arrives, we're going to be able to get to those stats, but this is what we're going to go with for now. Because Yasha Dream Song has a turn meter heal, I think she might pair very well with our Mons because of his stealing all turn meter, so that could be fun. Alright, so now let's go ahead and test Dream Song out in Arena. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to work, but our Mons is going to go first. He's going to do his turn meter stuff. Yasha is going to go next. She's going to do her A3 rolling into the A2. Nuke Wukong, 6 play, uh, six k attack plus with 100% crit rate and crit damage is here for most of the damage. And this spot right here, oh you can't see. Snake Track is sort of in a flex spot. I don't really know um, what's going to be best here yet. I'm going to mess around, maybe move some characters around. But this is going to be the base foundation for what this team uh, would look like. And of course... Uh, this is subject to change. If you have any suggestions for teams, let us know and I'll let my wife know. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. We're just going to leave it on auto. So our Monza does his thing. Let's go. Yep. Okay. And Yostrid does her A3 rolling into the A2. We don't place all of these debuffs and that's because her things are not booked. Snake Track is a pretty fun character with his reflect damage. Okay, so this might take a little bit now because everybody's back and those counterattacks are here. If we can probably get around to Wukong doing... Yep, there we go. <laughs> I called it. There it is. Uh, let's go ahead and try this team as well. Outspeeding Mother Cybell. Let's focus on Sill of Drakes here. There we go. Solid, solid. I like it. And let's just keep going down the line here. Oh, we have a mythical here. Let's uh, sheep that one. For sure. So we get all of the buffs here. This is actually a pretty solid team. We're getting a bunch of buffs. Pairs very well with our mons. Oh, the sleep? The sleep took uh, effect there. That's pretty cool. Look at that sleep. Take care of uh, Syl right here. She's placing, Yasha's placing the, the weaken and the decreased speed. Some mechanics from Armand's is keeping everybody at bay. This is pretty, pretty solid. The only thing stopping this team from doing a lot better is probably the gear. Yeah, Armand's is kind of busted, if, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I mean, he's a, it's hard to say. He's like a really, uh, I, I don't want to talk about him too much, but he's a very well-built champion. It's very annoying. Especially in Live Arena. Yeah, so having Yashrid in the team is helping us to go uh, a lot faster. And those debuffs are coming into play as well. As long as we can go first. Because I think if we're if we're getting outsped, it might become an issue. Let's focus on Elva. And there were a few times that we saw going up against that mythical where Yashrid's sleep actually did come into play. So this is pretty cool because... Uh, you know, we're, we're steamrolling through these, through these, t okay, here we go. Oh, yep. All right. Let's see what happens when we get outsped here. All right. Yep. Yep. Sounds about right. Maybe, maybe Wukong will come back and put some work in. Come on, Wukong. Nuke Kong. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We'll see here. If he can take this turn, if he can do it, he did. Oh my God, Wukong, bro. Let's go ahead and interesting setup. Let's let's take a look at her her team, her roster, and we'll see who might be a better fit. But I actually really like this team already with Snake Track. I mean, reflect damage could be extremely annoying. I mean, you see how annoying it is in like Hydra, for an example. Uh, and here it's it's doing doing wonders as well. 
let's take this last one and then we'll look at the entire uh, roster maybe try out a different character or maybe you guys get the idea i mean these extra turns the increased uh, speed and attack yeah pretty well built champion for arena i can see her especially with her if you don't have armands for example or wukong her arena speed is going to be helping out quite a bit and i actually wasn't even paying attention to the heals but let me, let, me, let me go back and pay attention again to the heals. Let me see here. Alright, we should get outsped, Arbiter. But we get stunned. Ooh. Maybe Wukong does... Oh, look at that! <laughs> he Rotos killed himself by hitting um, Snake Track with that reflect damage. That's, that's fun. Alright. Of course, some Wukong goes down. Oh, look at that. He's almost dead. Come on. Extra turns popping off. Y'all should have killed Rotos. Come on. You can do it, Wukong. You can do it. You can do it, Wukong. No. <laughs> Damn. I mean, we had him on the run. This is a level 100 account. My wife's account is at like level 71. He had a plus one Rotos. He had a fully blessed plus one Sill. We got outsped. The setup was perfect and we still almost ganked him. I want to see if I can just manual it. But maybe we can change somebody around. All right, so this is her full roster, guys, so far. Who do you think might... Let me move myself here. Who do you think might slot in better than Snake Track? I want to go back. I want to go back and fight that guy again because we almost get... We were right there. We were right there. That fight seemed like it was pretty much just down to gear. I think that if we didn't get outsped, we might have won that. Mighty Uko. Mighty Uko's got some some uh, RNG mechanics built into him, so that might be pretty fun. And maybe we can get lucky with RNG. All right. Yeah, I'll keep myself over here for now. So. All right. Oh, OK. So we're going to start off with our A3. And then roll in to the A2. Push back some turn meter. Let's try to sleep. Rotos. Oh, it doesn't happen. But we can try to remove everybody's buffs. There we go. Oh, is this it? Can we? Uh, Oh boy. No! He got all those extra turns. Alright, let's bring everybody back. Okay, who, who are we who do we have? Okay, let's get rid of Rodos. And let's hit Arbra. Should I have gone with the A3? Should I have gone with, with Sun Wukong's A3? Oh, Armand's it's over now. It's it's it, it's over. It's over. Armand's has got this. Armand's. It's over. Once Armand's takes a turn, that's it. It's a clap. Easy clap now. There it is. Got nothing now. Sill's not doing this by herself. Put that skill on cooldown. I gotta put her, uh, her, uh, in, like, some type of CC set. Stun, provoke. You guys ever have to sit through, like, an entire minute, and you have to rerun it? So, like, you're sitting here for a total of five minutes just trying to match with somebody? That happens to me quite often. Arian Salvatore. You, oh, he, this is this guy's a, a whale or something because he's already got Arbiter and Yasha at level 52. Uh, we're going to take in this guy. Yeah, at the lower tiers of Live Arena, you don't have to worry about who to pick first too much because there's no... Because uh, like in Gold Live Arena, if you choose one champion, you, you, the other person can't choose that champion as well. Definitely going with Uko and Snick here. I feel like we should ban their damage dealer, which might be Wukong, but I'm not really sure. Armand's, good choice. That's a good choice. We're going to go with Wukong here because he does have the blessing, the uh, intimidating presence. I, I almost, I think I said intimidating presidents. Okay, wow. So, um, Yostrid actually outsped his Arbiter. We're going to start off with the A3, get those buffs up, get the extra turn, place the decrease uh, speed, weaken as well as the um decrease turn meter block buffs so even if she does her a two nobody's getting an increase to attack granted this does seem like an easier fight because he is only level 52 i don't like fighting people at a lower level one it's because it's like if you if you win the argument is oh well you know he was at a lower level but then if you lose then it's kind of like, whoa, you lost to somebody at a lower level than you. We're going to 
If we hit with the A1, we're going to wake up Yostrid, who's slumped over right now. Swaying back and forth. We're just going to increase our speed here. All we need is for Wukong to pop off a move here. Let me stop you from taking a turn. And we get our extra turn. Can we put you to sleep? Nope. But we can hit you with that decreased turn meter and then smack you. Spear is just coming down all over the place. Getting throated. All right, so you, you guys get the idea of how she performs in Arena. Let's go ahead and, you know, I'm actually interested to see how she might do in Sand Devil. Let me see if I can come up, if, if there's any teams here available to us on the optimizer. Even if we can just do stage one, that could be fun to do. Okay, this is a uh, one way of doing it, purely nuking our way down. Let's go ahead and try to take uh, Yostrid and Wukong. All right, so Yostrid goes first. Oh, you know what? I should have tried to see if, if we would have placed sleep. That would have been nice to see. And we'll just hit the A1. Okay, so now she's asleep. Or he's asleep. Hit the A3. Ooh, Rhonda. Maybe maybe don't do that. You're messing up the flow here. Okay. Rhonda's chopping down. I mean, this is only stage one. But she's chopping down pretty well. And Wukong, just, Wu, just let's try to the next stage, and we're going to try with Yastrid's A1, see if that even works. Can we sleep him? We can sleep him. Okay, so that, that actually provides some insight, because now I know that we can sleep the Sand Devil. That's something there. We're, only, we're just going to use the A3 here so that we don't mess with the counter, and we can hit another nuke in. That's interesting. I like that. Oh, I should have done the A1 again. What, what am I doing? What are we doing here? All right, so just hit the A1 and do that. And then Wukong should be able to. Okay, that's pretty, pretty nice. Void. So there should be no negative um, mechanics here. We're going to do our, our standard buffs. A1. We get the sleep in. Hell yeah. Try to chop down. And it's so important to do the Ascension Dungeons. I, I tell you, like when you can start doing Ascension Dungeons, it gets pretty nasty because then you can you can choose basically what Ascension bonuses you have. I mean, when you start doing stage 25, I know it's like an end game thing to talk about, but like it's been a game changer for me on both of my accounts that can do Sand Devil 25 because like I have been able to change my uh, ascens ascensions to the ones that I want. So now she's doing stage four. I mean, I could set a set a preset for it for this, and this this would be pretty tight. I think it goes without saying she's going to be helping you in faction wars. So definitely. Wait, wait, what is this? What's hidden here? There's still one more faction missing. I completely forgot about that. Okay, so we're going to be taking her into the dungeons. Normally we're doing stage twenty, but we're taking our mons out so we can put Eostrid in. Before our mons, we had Oella. Now, because we're negative on stage 20 and 17, we're not going to be going there. We could do 19 and 18, but I actually want to try out stage 16 where we're flat out not dealing with affinity. It's nice to have Deacon and Yastra together because Deacon does some turn meter manipulation. He also places the decreased defense. With turn meter manipulation, that means we're going to be taking in more heals. With the decreased defense, that means we're going to be wave clearing a lot better because when you have decreased defense and you have an AoE decreased defense, we're not going to be sitting here dealing with the waves for that much, um, for, for too much time. Uh, when you're doing dungeons you don't want to spend too much time wave clearing you want to get straight to the boss decrease the the total time when you're doing dungeons so we have the weekend we have the decreased defense and when nut takes his next turn you're going to see that he is going to use his blessed bash and one shot the ice golem the issue is you don't want to normally uh, hit the ice golem too hard but if you can set it up just right, normally this works a lot better on stage 20 because of the, the speeds and everything. When you can properly set this up, it's a pretty nice team to have. Okay, and then when it comes to 
uh, Spider, we're still negative affinity because uh, she is spirit, but we're going to go ahead and try this team out. We're going to throw it in manual. What we want from Eostrid is to place the Weaken with her A2. Now, it might get resisted because we are negative affinity, or it just might not land at all because it's not fully booked. And that was the case here. But we're still going to run with it. I'm going to show you guys um, the way that this is going to work is we have our cold hearts luckily and we will be able to push back the turn meter of the spider using cold hearts as a3s and we can get the weekend off here we can get the weekend off here and also the cold hearts will smack pretty hard like this boom and we gotta wait for the other cold heart to go now we can do this and she gets an extra turn so we're gonna place our increased attack and everything she's taking so many turns <laughs> relentless gear man and more more turn meter control you see everybody's getting heals i mean everybody's already topped off and now we can end the fight here and um ideally you wouldn't really take her in to stage 20 like if you're negative affinity you don't want to really chance it so okay so now we're going to try again on uh, void affinity just to flatten everything out and the ostrid is going to place her weaken assuming it, it lands there it is okay the, the reason i'm saying assuming it lands is because i've been redoing this uh because because she doesn't have books it's not a hundred percent whenever she lands her um a2 like sometimes it'll land sometimes it won't sometimes i'm getting resisted other times it's because there's just it's not fully booked so fully book your champions otherwise there's too much RNG going on and it gets frustrating. You have to reshoot things so many times. But there it is. Uh, with her weaken and Deacon Armstrong's decreased defense, these guys are able to do what they need to do. All right, let's go ahead and try her out in stage 20 of the dragon. And this time we're not going to be dealing with negative affinity, positive affinity this time. And here we are going up against the boss. We're able to place the weaken, but not the decrease speed. Actually, I don't think decrease speed works on the dragon. Is he immune? He's immune to... To speed, I think. To speed, um, what do you call it? Manipulation in any form. So we're popping off, taking a bunch of turns here with the Ostrid. And the heals are popping off as well. And there it is. And then all of her buffs provide great support when going up against the Fire Knight. We are not negative affinity. We're actually um, equal affinity here. You're going to see that when we eventually do get the shield down, we're going to be able to place the decrease speed as well as the weaken, and that's going to be huge for you if you're trying to get those um, debuffs into Fire Knight. It's more a matter of whether or not we're able to survive even getting hit once, because for an example, like these cold hearts, if you see these guys even take a turn, they get hit pretty hard, and it looks like they won't take a turn. Yostrid was actually able to turn meter and manipulate them so that they didn't take a turn. Got here in a decent time. Now all that we have to do is get the shield down, and once the shield is down, I'm pretty confident we can do the rest of this with relative ease because we are going to keep the turn meter back. So you see, Yashra did push the turn meter back and place the decrease speed. We also got some... Uh, well, actually, Nut needs to be reworked because he needs more accuracy, I'm noticing. We've got all the debuffs that we need and we have our cold hearts doing the most. Easy. And just for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and take her into the Phantom Shogun. Let it run on auto. I want to see what, what she'll be able to do. We place the decrease speed, the weaken. Rhonda does her thing. I mean, I think on stage one, it's relatively easy, I think. But we'll, we'll see here. We don't really have a lot of blessings, so that could be an issue. So we'll see. Is 10 the max that you can do? Or that the max that he can go on, on this stage? I think so. Some heals. Yeah, so there, there was a lot of support coming on, on this side here. I'd have to look at Phantom Shogun uh, for her account, but I was just curious. And then I think with Yashrid's debuffs and her passive, she could heal and keep us alive when it comes to doing Iron Twins. So we'll see how, how this uh, this works against going, going up against the Iron Twins. Iron Twins can be nasty, especially because they hit pretty hard. This is stage one, though, so we'll see. We want to make a, a decent team here with a lot of um, survival mechanics. We have Geomancer. 
I think what we're missing here is a solid healer. So I might have to, like, because Eostra does provide some heals, but it's only when turn meter is being uh, increased. So without that, we're not getting the proper heals. So on the later stages, this is probably not going to be too viable. But I just wanted to see how she performs here too. Ideally, we would have somebody like Oella. Oella provides a lot of heals as well as uh, buff duration increases. She brings turn meter fill, and that pairs well with Yastrid's uh, turn meter heals. We're also doing increased res so that the Iron Twins can't place those B uh, deep. I said B buffs, D buffs too easily. And even though it's pretty small. When Eostrid does heal, it's nice to have because every little heal counts. But the main thing here is Eostrid, or not Eostrid, but Oella um, placing the, the buffs and the heals, or the buff increases, durations, and the heals. But this will be a pretty solid team. Eostrid is going to make sure that we're taking a lot of turns and cycling through our moves a lot faster. And that's where the main um, draw is when it comes to using Eostrid. Of course, we're we are placing we are placing the uh, the decrease speed and actually are we even placing decrease speed? Yeah, we are. Decrease speed and the weaken, but mainly we're making sure that we're taking as many turns as as possible. And she's able to provide. Oh, we can't place decrease speed with the Austria. So yeah, this is a pretty solid team, pretty solid traditional setup. I prefer to do the unkillable comps like the one Bronco made. That's what I use. It's really fast. It's like under a minute. But if you're trying to go for something a little bit more traditional, this is a good way to do it. Making sure that you're taking a lot of turns using Eostrid and getting a lot of support in and basically making it so that Geomancer does what he needs to do. And then Snake Track is helping out pretty well. Now it's just a matter of that. Okay, perfect. So now my wife can do Iron Twins. Against the Demon Lord clan boss, sleep isn't going to do anything. Decreased speed isn't going to do anything. Weaken will help as well as, um, well, I mean, the decreased turn meter is not going to play anything, but increasing turn meter and then increasing attack and increasing speed is going to help out your team as well as the minuscule heals. However, I don't think that she would be the best for when it comes to doing clan boss. Like if you if you don't have anybody else, go ahead and definitely use her because Weekend does help, especially if you're using something like Theodore and Geomancer. That is useful. You know, boosting turn meter is always pretty good, especially in a traditional team because you want to be taking. I mean, let's go ahead and take her in. Yeah, we'll just we'll just throw this in and see what we end up doing. Yeah, so like her biggest thing is going to be turn meter manipulation, making sure that your team is cycling through their moves uh, as fast as possible. Uh, she does place weaken, but the thing is, for this account, we do have multiple champions that do manipulate turn meter already. Uh, against the clan boss, I mean, like, we have... We have Deacon, if we want turn meter manipulation to increase turn meter. And then we have somebody like Uko who increases speed, or like Elva. And... Yashrid is nice if you don't have anybody else. But other than that, I don't really... Like, she does place the, the small heals, but I mean, if we're looking for heals, we got Oella. So for this specific team, for this specific account, I don't think her place is the clan boss, personally. And then I, I think we're coming to the end here. So yeah, a lot of Eostrid's value that was provided has to do with her making the team move faster. And her weekend obviously helped out quite a bit, but I mean, we have Teal for that as well. And her heals actually provided uh, some some worth there. So let's see the total at the end here. We got 30.22 million damage dealt. Uh, a lot of heals coming out of Yastrid. 1.1 million heals. That was just passively whenever Deacon was doing some turn meter manipulation or when Yastrid was placing her uh, increase turn meter buff. Her war masters were proccing, so there was some damage there. All right, and then let's go ahead and hit normal Hydra. See how she performs here. Of course, she goes first. She's the fastest one on the team. Oh, we did get feared placed on us, so that's not a good thing. Now, my wife isn't really doing um, Hydra quite yet. She kind of just throws in her best champions, which is totally fine for the beginning. And, you know, honestly, in... Uh, when you're first starting out, it's mostly just important that you're throwing whatever keys you have to get whatever damage you can get. 
you know, the heals, even though they don't seem like a lot, over the long span, they accumulate, and that is pretty nice to have. Okay, well, now we're going to be focusing on this head that we can't target, because if we don't have Hex, we can't target him. So can't wait to get Mithral on, on uh, my wife's account. I think she's like 60 fragments in. Okay, we got rid of that head. Got to get Wukong out. There we go. We got Wukong out. Let's get rid of this head of fear so we can actually take our turns and just throw it back on auto here. He's, we finally got rid of that head. I think the lowest chest is only like 1.1 1 .1 or 1.12. So I'll check right after this. I don't think my wife's ever done this much damage to Hydra. And I'm pleasantly surprised at how much healing Yashrit is doing with her passive. So just shy of 12 million. And Yashrit doing some damage herself. But mostly look at those heals. She actually provided a lot of healing passively. And that is a sight to see. That's pretty nice. Top chest is 6.6. .6, and the novice chest, the lowest one is 1.67 which still drops fragments for Mithrala. Yastrid is either Grand Oak Padrig's daughter, cousin, or wife. That's confusing. 